If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Scott. I am a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology. I'm also a type 1 diabetic. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you're interested in diabetes-related news, tech reviews, and things like that, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with new content all of the time. So what we're going to be talking about today is unexpected causes of blood sugar spikes or elevations in your blood sugar. Most diabetics assume that the main things that affect blood sugar are your activity level, the food you eat, and the medication you take. And while that's true, there's a number of causes, some that we can control, some that we can't, that actually have a big impact on our blood sugar levels and things that you should be aware of to kind of anticipate if you do experience some of these different situations. So while there's a number of different causes of blood sugar spikes and blood sugar changes outside of the food, exercise, and medication that we take, I'm going to go over the five most important ones, the five ones that I find people experience the most. So the first one that I wanted to talk about is sunburn. I'm sure most of us have experienced it. I personally live in Florida. I've experienced it more times than I'd like to admit. Um, but sunburn can actually cause an elevation in your blood sugar. So there's a couple different reasons why this happens. First, when you have a burn, you're likely going to experience some level of pain. And pain increases the stress in the body and any type of stress in the body can cause an increase in your blood sugars. But the other reason, which is really the more important of the two, is that anytime you have inflammation in the body, whether it's because you have an injury, you have a burn like in a sunburn, you're sick, anytime you have an inflammatory cause in the body, the body produces something called cortisol. Cortisol is a potent anti-inflammatory hormone and its responsibility is to decrease the inflammation and also help with some of the pain. But a secondary effect of cortisol is actually to trigger the liver to increase the amount of glucose it's releasing, which leads to elevations in blood sugar. So my fellow diabetics, please use your sunscreen. It'll not only protect you from burns, but it'll also protect you against higher blood sugar levels. The second one might be a little bit disappointing to some of you out there, but the second one is caffeine. Now I'm not talking about Starbucks coffee with all the added sweeteners and creamers and all of those things. I'm talking about caffeine by itself, black coffee. Caffeine can have an impact on your blood sugar levels. There was a study conducted by Duke University where they took one group of diabetic patients and gave them the equivalent of two cups of coffee per day. They took a second group and gave them no source of caffeine, and then they tested their blood sugars throughout the week, and they compared the two at the end of the week. They found the group that had the caffeine consumption, the caffeine consumption group, had about an 8% higher blood sugar level throughout the week compared to the group that had no caffeine added. So 8% increase just from caffeine alone. Now again, there's a couple different reasons with this as well. First, caffeine in certain amounts, especially in excess, can lead to insulin resistance. Now the reason behind this isn't you know, necessarily known, they're still doing research into this, but caffeine can cause insulin resistance, meaning the insulin that you take isn't gonna work as well. The second reason is because caffeine can stimulate the release of adrenaline. Caffeine causes excitation in the brain, the brain perceives this as an emergency and starts cranking out adrenaline. That's why sometimes caffeine can make you feel all jittery and on edge. The problem with adrenaline is adrenaline, like any other stress hormone in the body, can cause an increase in blood sugar. So you have a couple reasons here. One, the insulin resistance. The second is the adrenaline, which is gonna cause an increase in your blood sugar levels as well. That stress hormone can bring the blood sugars up. Now, my own personal experience, I have noticed a slight increase when I have coffee. I normally just drink my coffee black, no creamer, no sweetener. So if I'm drinking coffee black, I will notice about a 10 to 15 um, point increase in my blood sugar levels. The third one, and this is probably the most surprising of all of them, is exercise. So I'm talking specifically about high intensity anaerobic exercise. We're not talking about aerobic exercise like jogging, riding your bike, taking a brisk walk, things like that. We're talking about anaerobic exercise. So anaerobic exercise is high intensity interval training, weightlifting, CrossFit, those types of exercise where you're doing short bouts of high intensity exercise for just short periods of time. So basically the type of exercise where you do about two minutes of exercising and you're like bent over, catching your breath, feeling like you're about to die. That's anaerobic exercise. So the reason behind this is another hormone that we release, similar to the one we talked about with caffeine. So when you exercise in these high intensity intervals, when you have anaerobic exercise, your body takes this as a serious episode of stress, it turns on your fight or flight mode, and it starts to release adrenaline again. When we release adrenaline, adrenaline is released in this fight or flight mode, the assumption the body has is that something's gonna go down, you need the energy for the muscles, it starts producing glucose from the liver to provide a source of energy for the muscles. So again, more glucose, blood sugars is going to go up. A good way that I found to counteract this as I used to do these high intensity type of exercises is I would start the anaerobic exercise, whether it was weightlifting, if I was doing some form of CrossFit, I would do that first 
And then I would follow that up with about 20 to 30 minutes of aerobic exercise. Normally it was jogging for me sometimes, um, just taking a brisk walk after for about 20 to 30 minutes, because that generally brings your blood sugar down. So you start with something that brings your blood sugar up and then finish it up with an aerobic exercise like jogging, brisk walking to bring your blood sugar down. And those two can counteract each other. I did have a period where I was doing this anaerobic exercise and I didn't understand the cause behind it and I was having blood sugar spike sometimes up to 300 after the types of exercise. So this can have a really significant impact. You want to be careful because a lot of times you'll have that impulse to see that 300 after you exercise, give a big bolus of insulin, or you wind up with a episode of hypoglycemia later on that can be pretty serious because your blood sugar will go down in time once all of those stress hormones kind of calm down, your blood sugar will drop. So you have to be careful in these types of situations when you're doing anaerobic exercise. Fourth one, I'm sure a lot of us have uh, experienced this, if not currently at some point in our life, but not getting enough sleep. So there's been a number of studies that have shown this, but even one night of um, insufficient sleep can actually lead to insulin resistance. There's a specific study where they took 16 individuals and they exposed these individuals to only five hours of sleep per night for five days straight. At the end of the study, they compared it to individuals who had sufficient amount of sleep and they found the individuals who only had the five hours of sleep per night had significantly increased insulin resistance compared to the group that had adequate sleep. They found in some studies that insulin resistance can increase by as much as 30% in people who are sleep deprived. And that means you're gonna have to take 30% more insulin to have the same impact as if you were having a normal night of sleep compared to a night where your sleep was impacted and you weren't getting um, sufficient amount of sleep. Another problem with inadequate sleep or staying up late is that studies have found that when you stay up later and you're not getting good sleep, your body actually produces more cortisol. And as we went over before, we know cortisol has a negative impact on our blood sugar levels. Final cause of unexpected spikes in our blood sugar can be from dehydration, so not getting enough fluids. A couple reasons why this happens. The first reason is because when you measure your blood sugar, it's measuring the concentration of glucose in that drop of blood. So when you become dehydrated, you have less fluid in the blood, the blood becomes more concentrated, and the amount of glucose in that drop is going to wind up being higher than if you were well hydrated and there was a decent amount of fluid in that drop. So it's basically the glucose is more concentrated in that drop and your blood sugar will wind up being higher when measured. The second reason is because when you become dehydrated, your body produces a hormone called vasopressin. The role of vasopressin is to tell the body to hang on to all of the existing fluid in the body, to retain as much fluid as possible. But a secondary effect of vasopressin is it actually tells the liver to start producing glucose, another hormone that tells the liver to produce glucose, unfortunately. So dehydration, a number of causes that can lead to an increase in your blood sugar, but definitely something you don't ever want to be as a diabetic because diabetes can lead to dehydration to begin with when you have higher blood sugars and things like that. So absolutely something you want to avoid and to be aware of that it can cause by itself an increase in blood sugar. So again, there's a lot of different causes of um, blood sugar spikes and elevation in your blood sugar outside of the ones that we're most familiar with, the food, the activity level, and the medication. If there's any you want me to talk about maybe on another video or any that you've experienced yourself, please let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching the video.